Hello again. Um, today we're going to look at the different methods that we can use to solve simultaneous equations. Now the two methods I'm going to focus on are substitution and the other method is called elimination. So the first method, substitution, we'll do our first example using this. So substitution is the first method I'm going to show you how to solve a simultaneous equation, the method of substitution. And once again, the best way to perhaps explain it to you is using an example. So the example we're going to use is just imagine we have these two equations we need to solve. y equals 2x plus 3. And the other equation is 4x minus y equals 5. Now, the substitution method is often uh, very useful if one of the linear equations is written in terms of y, like this one is, and the other one isn't. And so the way we would solve this set of simultaneous equations is because we know that y is equal to 2x plus 3, wherever we see a y in our second equation that we wish to solve, we can substitute the value of y in the second one for 2x plus 3. So in other words, because this first equation is telling us that y is equal to 2x plus 3, that means that where I see that y, I can replace it with 2x plus 3. And so my next line in solving this would read like this. I'm now going to substitute the value of 2x plus 3 into y. So here's what we would get. 4x minus, now we're not writing y, we're substituting this value into y, so it's going to be minus in bracket because we've got number of terms that we are subtracting. So it's going to be 2x plus 3 in place of y equals 5. So that's the substitution part. So now what we're going to do is simply simplify this and try to work out what x would equal. So my next step would be 4x. Now it's going to be minus 2x, so it's minus 2x here then minus positive 3. Remember, everything in the brackets is being minus or subtracted. So it'll be minus 3, getting rid of the brackets, equals 5. My next step is to collect my like terms. So I've got x terms here, and I've got a couple of numbers here. So I know that 4x take away 2x is 2x. And that equals, oops, my apologies. 2x minus 3 equals 5. So now I'm going to move my negative 3 to the other side of the equation by adding it to both sides. So I'm going to add 3 to here and add 3 over here. And I now have 2x, and they cancel. 5 plus 3 is 8, so 2x equals 8. Now I'll just move up here now to continue, so we know that 2x equals 8. So finally we can work out that the x value, if I divide both sides by 2, I can see that x equals 4. So I know that one of the one of the values of where the two these two graphs intersect, they're simultaneous the simultaneous solution, I know the x value is 4. Now I need to find the corresponding y value. Remember, when two lines cross, the point where they cross, this intersection point, will have an x value, and it will also have a y value. 
we're trying to find the coordinates of that point, the xy solution to these two equations. We've just found the x value, it's 4. To find the y value that goes with this value, in other words the y value of this point, what we can do, we can take the fact that we now know that x equals 4 at this point and plug x equals 4 into either of these two equations because this point is lying on both of these equations so it doesn't matter which equation we use. My advice would be to use the, the easiest one. Now in this case we're trying, to find, we're trying to find out y and this one here is already set up to find y. So I'm going to use equation A. I've just labeled them A and B. I'm going to use this equation to work out what the corresponding y value is. So to find the corresponding y value, substitute the x value, the x solution, and in this case the x solution is x equals 4 in this case, into either of the equations, either. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. So using equation A, I'll write the equation down again. It's y equals 2x plus 3. Now what I'm doing, I'm trying to find the value of y that goes with this x value of 4. So I'm going to plug in or substitute x equals 4 into this equation to find out what the y value is. So I've got y equals 2 times now x equals 4, so I'm replacing the x with 4, plus 3. 2 times 4 is 8, plus 3, so y will actually equal 11. So now we know the y value for that point is 11. So the simultaneous solution to this set of, of um, simultaneous equations is the point. The x value always goes first. 4, comma, 11. So they are the coordinates of that point there where these two lines cross. That is the solution to this problem. And the method we used was the method of substitution. Now remember, substitution is when we substitute one of the variables, in this case y, into the other equation like this. Now just to confirm that this is in fact the correct equation, I'm going to plot these on a graph uh, using Desmos and just confirm our result. So well, we'll, we will um, go to Safari. So the two equations were y equals 2x plus 3. So there's that equation. Now the second equation was 4x minus y equals 5. Well, I need to rearrange that one first, don't I? So, remember the second equation, I need to rearrange that so that y is on its own. So I'm going to do that over here in a different colour. So we'll go with perhaps a light green. So the equation I start with, I'm starting with 4x minus y equals 5. But I want to rearrange this so it's in the form of y equals something x plus, or y equals mx plus c. So what I'm going to do is firstly, I'm going to, because my y is negative, I'm going to move it to the other side by adding it, and that will make it positive. So I'm going to plus y to both sides of the equation. So I've got 4x minus y plus y cancel 
equals y plus 5, or 5 plus y. I'm going to write as y plus 5. The next thing I have to do is get to get the y on its own is remove the positive 5. So to do that, I need to subtract 5 from both sides. So I finally end up with y equals, I'm going to write it in reverse order now, starting here, y equals 4x minus 5. So there is my rearranged equation. So this equation here is the same as this equation here. It's just been rearranged so that y is out the front on its own. y equals 4x minus 5. So now we can plot that on our, um, on our program. So y equals 4x minus 5. So our second equation is y equals 4x minus 5. Now you can see that these two graphs are intersecting at a certain point. And look at that. That point is 411. The x value is 4. And the y value is 11. And that is exactly what we predicted in our calculations. If you remember, our solution was 411. So that's how we can actually solve the equation using or solve these simultaneous equations using substitution. In the next segment, I'm going to explain how we can solve two equations simultaneously using the other method called elimination. Thank you. Okay, welcome back. And in this particular part of the program, we're going to look at how we can solve two equations simultaneously using a different method. The first method we used was substitution. In this occasion, we're going to use another method called elimination. Now, elimination, the elimination method we would often use if we have two equations and neither of which are in the form where y is out the front. So you know how a linear equation is often y equals mx plus c, plus some number in front of the x and a number on the end. And if neither of the equations are like that, neither of them, in this case, as in this case here, we can use the elimination method. Now, the whole point of the elimination method is to remove one of the letters. And I'll show you why. If I had an equation, say y plus x equaled 6, I can't solve that equation. Because I don't have, I've got two, I don't have enough information. I have too many unknowns here. Because I know that, for example, if I want to find y, y would equal six minus x, but the value of y d depends on what x is. So if, if x is five, then that would then y would be one. If x was two, y would be four. So I would need to know my x value in order to solve that equation. So what I really need to do in order to solve an equation like that is I need to bring it down so that there's only one variable in there. For example, this equation, y equals 3y, whoops, y equals 3y plus 1, I could solve. And I'll show you why. Because there's only one unknown in there. So I can move 3y over here. So subtracting 3y from both sides. They cancel. So y take away 3y is negative 2y equals 1. And then I can divide both sides by negative 2. And they cancel. And y equals negative 1 half. So if I have one unknown only, I can solve that equation. So that's the logic behind using the elimination method. And that's the method we're going to use in solving these two equations here. So you'll notice we've got two unknowns. We've got x's and y's, as we would normally have in any linear equation. But what I want to do 
is try to eliminate, eliminate one of these unknowns. And it's a little bit different to what we've been used to, but let me show you how we can do this. Now, by looking at these, I can see that 2 and 3, I can think of a number that both 2 and 3 go into. In other words, the lowest common multiple of 2 and 3 is 6. 2 times 3 is 6. So if I was somehow able to make, to change that equation and this one so that both of them look like 6x, then I could actually eliminate that x term. So I'll show you, I'll explain that in a bit more detail right now. So what I do, I choose one of my terms. In this case, I'm choosing my x term. And I'm looking for the lowest common multiple or the smallest number that both of those numbers will go into. And in this case, that number is 6. So the smallest common multiple In this case, it's 6, and we're trying to eliminate the x term. So, the first thing I now have to ask myself is, the number, look at the number in front of the x here, and here's my common multiple 6. What do I have to multiply this equation by, or this term by, to make it 6? 2 times what equals 6? Well, the answer is 3. Now remember, you can do anything to an equation you like, provided you whatever you do to one side, you do to the other. So if I'm going to multiply this term by 3 to make it look like 6x, or turn it into 6x, I have to multiply every other term in this equation by 3 as well. So what I will end up with over here will be 2x times 3, which is 6x. 3y times 3 is 9y. And 4 times 3 is 12. So I've multiplied each term in this equation by 3. And the reason why I did that was to make the x, turn the 2x into 6x. Because we want to actually, we want to make these two x terms the same. Now we look at the second equation and we go through the same process. We're looking at the x term, remember? We're looking at the x term, we look at the number in front of the x term. The common multiple is 6. What do I have to multiply 3 by to make it 6? Well, the answer is 2. So multiplying everything in this equation by 2. So 3x times 2 is 6x. Now look at that, they're both the same now. 2y times 2 is 4y. And 10 times 2 is 20. So, now I've got, I've converted these two equations to these two equations. I'll call those equations A and B. Now the difference is that both of them have a 6x in them. And one of the things you're allowed to do in your solving simultaneous equations, you can add these two equations together or subtract them. So just like you'd add any two numbers, I'm now going to add these equations. And we just add them, oh sorry, I'm not going to add them, I'm going to subtract them because I want to get rid of the 6x. So if I now subtract the bottom equation from the top one, the 6x's will disappear. So let's go through this. So 6x, I'm, ta I'm taking the top equation and I'm then minusing the bottom equation. 6x minus 6x is 0. Nine y take away 4y is positive 5y. See what I'm doing? I've lined up my terms and I'm just subtracting them. Over here, bring my equal sign down, 12 take away 20 is negative 8. 
So now, look what I'm left with. I'm left with the equation 5y equals negative 8. That only has a y term in there. We can now solve it. And we can solve it by simply dividing both sides by 5. They cancel. And so y equals negative 8 fifths. Which would be equivalent to negative 16 by doubling the top and the bottom. 16 over 10, which would be equivalent to negative 1 point. Six. So there's my y term. Okay, now I still have to find the x term. And if you remember from last time, I have to, if we use the same method, we have to take our y value that we've just worked out in this case. So we can substitute that into either of the equations to work out what the x term is. But what we have to do before we can do that is rearrange the equation we're going to substitute it into so that x is on its own in this case. So I'm going to substitute it into this equation here. So we're now going to substitute this value for y into that equation to see if we can work out what x is. But first I'm going to rearrange this equation. So in rearranging I'll do that in a different colour. So we'll go to green so, 3x plus 2y equals 10. Now remember, I'm trying to get the x on its own. So I'm going to take away the y terms first. So I'm going to take 2y from both sides. They cancel. So I'm left with 3x equals 10 minus 2y. The next step is to divide both sides by 3 to get rid of that 3 in front of the x. Now I'm dividing both sides by 3, so this whole lot has to be divided by 3. So they cancel, and so I'm left with x equals 10 minus 2y over 3. So now I can substitute my value for y, which is negative 1.6, into this equation where I see the y and work out what the corresponding x value is. So now I'm going to do that. So, we're now going to substitute the value y equals negative 1.6 into this equation. So I now got x equals 10 minus 2 times negative 1.6. 0.6 all over 3 and that will equal um, 10 minus now 2 times negative 1.6 is negative 3.2 so it's going to be minus negative 3.2 which is positive 3.2 so whenever you go to minus negative, it becomes a positive. So it's a positive there, divided by 3. So that's going to become 13.2 divided by 3. And um, as a decimal, 13.3, 13.2 divided by 3 is 4.4. So, let's just look what we've got here. This is our x term. That's our x value for our solution. This is our y value. So our final solution to this set of simultaneous equations, the final solution, or the final simultaneous solution, the final simultaneous solution, remember it's the x value first, so it's going to be 4.4, comma, negative 1.6. And if you solve these two using your graphics calculator, um, you should find that the point where these two graphs cross over will be the same point. So 
that's an example of the elimination method. And uh, well, I think we'll leave it there. And uh, good luck with that. Thank you. Bye. Okay. In this final video, I'm just going to show you how we can confirm our solution to that final problem, the elimination method one, using our graphics calculator. So we'll just make sure maximum zoom size. There we go. And I'm going to set up a new page. There's a new page and menu algebra solve. Now, if you remember, the equation, the elimination, the first equation was 2x plus 3y equals 4. So I've got 2x plus 3y equals 4. Now, remember we need to, in order to graph this equation, we need to solve this for y. In other words, we need to rearrange it or transpose it so that y is the subject. So I need to push comma, then y, and return. And there is my equation. y equals negative 2 times x minus 2 all over 3. So I'm going to just grab that. And I'm going to edit and copy. And now I'm going to go to a graph page. I'm going to create a new graph page. Okay, so all I'm going to do now is add a new graph page. And I'm now going to paste in the equation. And enter. And there is my graph. Okay, so... There's the first equation. The second equation was 3x plus 2y equals 10. So I'm now going to menu, algebra, solve. And the equation was 3x plus 2y equals 10. And remember, I now need to solve for y to rearrange it. So comma y. And my equation is now y equals negative 3x minus 10 divided by 2. So I'm going to select that again. I'm going to copy that. Edit, paste. And there it is. Enter. And there's the second equation. Move my equations out of the way. And the point there is the point we want where these two points cross. And menu, analyze graph, we want the intersection point. Now we want to set the lower bound. Now the lower, remember the lower bound has to be to the left of where they cross, so over here. And now it's asking us for the upper bound, so we need to now move to the other side. And there's our solution, 4.4 and negative 1.6, which is exactly what we uh, calculated using our elimination method. So I hope that helps. Thank you. Bye.